Friends, it's about time we had the conversation about volume levels. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put zero decibels, which is our unit of volume for our purposes in this unit of sound and waves. I'm going to stack on top of zero decibels 10 decibels, 20 decibels, 30 decibels, 40 decibels, 50 decibels, 60 decibels, 70 decibels, and I'll keep going up in this stack until we get to around 140 decibels and I'll cut it off there. This is going to be our approximate scale for how loud certain sounds can be. You could also think of this as the amplitude of a sound wave or how powerful it is. Decibel is our chosen unit and actually there could be an infinite amount of decibels if sounds kept getting louder and louder. But we're going to stop around 140 because there really aren't that many sounds that are created in the natural world that are louder than 140 decibels. In fact, natural sounds rarely get above 120. So let's get started. First thing we should address is the importance of zero decibels. Now you'd probably think that zero decibels means no volume. Interestingly enough, that's not the case. In fact, zero decibels is actually a very interesting topic that really can have its own lesson attached to it someday that we'll watch. Uh, zero decibels has a name. It's called the threshold of intensity, which makes it sound really cool and epic. And that's because it is cool and epic, just like everything else you study in this class, right? So what is the threshold of intensity? Well, that's a fancy way of saying the quietest sound that a human can possibly hear. Now notice that does not say the quietest sound that can be heard. It says the quietest sound a human can hear. We'll take that into account later on. So zero decibels means not nothing, but the quietest possible sound a human can hear. I can't even fathom what that would be, but it's something that's very, very quiet. It's almost so quiet that it's inaudible to a human, but there's still something there. Here's what we'll do. We'll now look at all the other decibels, or at least most of them, and we'll try and figure out what real sounds in our life match these volume levels. So just to start out, 10 decibels is extremely quiet. It's the sound of a watch ticking, essentially. If you've ever been alone in a quiet room where there's no sound and you've been wearing a watch, that might be the only time you'll ever hear that watch. Or maybe you keep a watch in your room and when you're falling asleep at night and there's no other sound, you might hear the tick, tick, tick of a watch. And if you don't wear a watch, then you have no idea what I'm talking about. But watches are very, very quiet, but they do make some sound and only when it's absolutely silent everywhere else can you hear it. So usually these sounds that we're gonna start out with are drowned out by more prominent noises. Speaking of which, here's another quiet sound. About 30 decibels would be the sound or volume level of leaves rustling far in the distance. So whatever season it is, there probably are some leaves on some trees somewhere, and when the wind blows, you hear that very quiet sound. It's almost so quiet you don't even really notice it's there because you're so used to it. But there is really a sound. It's a bass sound that's usually applied to most outdoor environments, and it's around 30 decibels. Jumping up a little bit to 50 decibels, that's the volume level of a normal conversation that you'd have with about one meter of distance between another human being. Or cat, I guess, if you're crazy. So normal conversation is about 50 decibels, and that's about the volume that I'm talking with right now. If I weren't talking to a computer right now, if I were talking to, let's say, a room full of high school students, then I would probably be speaking at 60 decibels, which is my projecting voice. This is also the volume that people sing at. So it's more likely that you'll be singing at about 60 decibels. So when you're out at karaoke night on a Friday, 60 decibels is about where you're at. Now as we get above 60 decibels, we're going to start to enter what I like to call the pain zone, which is also what I call my home gym. The pain zone is a part of this spectrum of sound where you're going to feel pain when you hear these noises at the approximate distances that we'll be talking about. And all of these distances are assumed to be the normal distance that you are usually away from these sources. So we're not being exact here with these decibel levels, but we're getting as close as we can to realistic numbers. So let's enter the pain zone, shall we? Uh, first thing that we'll address in the pain zone is a jackhammer. This is usually a very irritating noise to most people because they're extremely loud. So if you're walking past a city block where there's construction happening, you've probably heard the ga 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 of the jackhammer, and if you're pretty close to it, you're likely to block your ears as you walk by it. Same thing for the next sound we'll talk about. 100 decibels would be the siren noise of a police car or an ambulance. There's a reason that these are designed to be annoyingly loud. It's because they have to be heard or audible from inside of a vehicle that has the radio blasting and the engine revving. So everyone in a mile radius needs to know that the police or the ambulance are on their way somewhere. 
So that's why they have to be so loud. That's why they choose 100 decibels approximately as the volume that they're going to output. They wouldn't be very useful sirens if they were at 30 decibels because they didn't, then even trees could drown them out. So let's jump even higher. What would be 120 decibels? Well, that would be like if you were in the front row of a rock concert or a rap concert or some really loud live performance. Probably not a classical music concert, but any other concert you can imagine being right up front is going to be about 120 decibels. Now, people who have been to concerts before, you may know that when you're at the concert, because there's so much loud noise, your ears are going to be affected. Maybe permanently, maybe not. That's something that we'll also talk about in this sound unit. But if you've left a concert and your ears have been ringing afterwards, and maybe the next day when your friends are trying to talk to you, all you hear is like, what? And you just hear ringing in your ears, that's because of damage that was caused by those speakers. So we're in the pain zone here, but we're starting to now exit the pain zone and enter a region where there are things like gunshots and jet engines that can actually cause permanent damage to your ears. Permanent hearing loss is what will occur beyond 130 decibels. If you are uh, you know, hunting and you have a gun, you're very likely to have maybe a set of earmuffs or if you work at an airport, same thing, you're likely to be legally required to wear special headphones that block out sound. Because if that airplane jet engine turns on when you're right next to it, or if someone fires a gun right next to your head, God forbid, then your eardrum could actually implode. It could actually shred itself from the intense amount of vibration in the air from these very loud noises. And that's because the amplitude of the sound wave is so great, it really just overwhelms that part of your body, the tiny little flap of skin that is your eardrum. So be careful what you do with your earbuds when you're listening to your music. If I can hear your music, your music's too loud.